Today, we're joined by Mike Yaretz. Mike is a nationally recognized dental software, IT, and electronic health records expert. He's the founder of dentalsoftwareadvisor.com. And as a leading industry consultant and educator, he's helped DSOs and dental groups evaluate and select software vendors and solutions, structure and negotiate vendor contracts, and provide vendor management. He also has assisted dental clients with obtaining millions in technology subsidy payments through the EHR incentive program. And he writes a monthly column for us here at Dental Products Report. Mike, welcome to our broadcast. Thanks for joining us. Well, thanks, Noah. I really appreciate you having me. I'm really excited about this topic. Yeah, and we asked you to join us today because uh, during this COVID-19 pandemic, we have seen just an absolute explosion in teledentistry product offerings from different companies and dentists increasing their use of this technology. I saw one article that uh, stated they thought that uh, this pandemic had pushed teledentistry and telemedicine ahead by about a decade. And I guess I wanted to just sort of start off by asking your yeah. thoughts on what's been happening in that space. And kind of then from there, maybe we rewind and you can explain a little bit about, in your mind, what is teledentistry and how can it work? Well, you know, it's real interesting, Noah, but you mentioned the explosion. I guess um, it's weird to say, but if there's any silver lining and all this craziness, you know, I've been involved with telehealth since actually the late 90s. It's a little kept secret you and I have never talked about. But I mean, I was working in the medical field for a lot of years, and I, I was really interested as a geek, as a technology guy years ago. And uh, it's funny because the whole telehealth, teledentistry, telemedicine, that's always been there. Um, not as good because we have better technology today, but the concept's been there. But now with COVID, it's kind of kicked up on steroids. So this technology that is just wonderful technology, it's been kind of a hidden secret. Now people are starting to talk about, uh, you asked me the question about kind of what is teledentistry? Yeah. I think people think of it as just a technology. Okay, you have a patient on one side, a doc on the other, and they can talk to each other from home in the office, right? But, but it's much more than that. Um, you and I have talked a lot about the idea of a care team, right? In medicine, you have this concept of the medical home where you have, it's patient-centric. You have the patient involved with their care and their general, doc, their general doctor. You have uh, specialists involved. And the idea of this, quote, medical home, well, now at dentistry, we can have the concept of a dental home where through technology, we can actually embrace this collaboration. So when I think of teledentistry, I think of much more than just a connection back and forth between a patient and a doctor. Mm -hmm. So what types of different platforms are there that you would consider teledentistry platforms? Uh, well, let's see, we have a couple hours for this uh, interview, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, okay, uh, let me categorize it. There's, uh, when you think about models, let's talk about vendors and companies. And, and as you're a, a practice group DSO, you're gonna see a lot out there. So let's talk, let's think about vendors and their software offerings in that way, okay. First of all, you're gonna see vendors that have traditional software offerings, whether it's patient education, you know, their wheelhouse, whether it's patient engagement and marketing, right? But because of the popularity of COVID, what they've done is they've bolted on um, video conferencing and being able to chat, right? So that's kind of one category is, not really tell dentistry vendors per se, but traditional software vendors have said, hey, <laughs> you know, let's add quote tell dentistry to it. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's one model. Then you have the other model, which is what I think people think a lot of, and which has really kicked us up on steroids, has been, well, you can, you can kind of cull together and bolt together Zoom and maybe a calendar application, and maybe some kind of payment app, uh, PayPal or whatever. And so what you're doing is you're trying to put together these disparate third-party applications yourself and kind of making it all work in a workflow, okay? Mm -hmm. Then you have companies that actually are teledentistry solutions. And, and you know, we don't have time to talk about it now, but companies that actually be committed that, hey, we're gonna be a teledentistry company, we're gonna think about workflow, we're gonna grow our applications specific to growing workflows in teledentistry. So that's the third one I would call them, I would call them teledentistry companies. Mm -hmm. Then the final one that might not be as applicable for us as owning practices, DSOs, and groups is you're starting to see, I mean, when you go to a website, you Google tell dentistry, you go to a website and you look at it, and let's say you're looking for software for your practice or group, and all of a sudden you see, we offer you a network of our 10,000 dentists all around the country. If you have an emergency, just get to us, right? Well, these are companies that actually utilize a white label or a third-party teledentistry application 
but their wheelhouse is really to offer networks of, of dentists to people remotely. Now, I think of that as more competitive to what we're trying to do because I'm trying to help dental groups, practices, and DSOs help their patients with using teledentist technology. Well, <laughs> do you want somebody to go to another dentist when your patients because they're looking for a teledentistry doctor, right? So really, this is why I think it's so important that dental groups, practices, and DSOs embrace this technology for their own patients, because I'll tell you what, trains left the station, if they don't, there's gonna be plenty of people out there at networks that'll take their patients through teledentistry. Does that kind of make sense a little bit? Yeah, and I guess one of the things that I think, uh, I hear a lot of questions about, both in the dental industry and from people outside the industry, patients and you know the like, is what does a teledentistry appointment actually entail and what does it mean because you know dentistry is generally a very tactile hands-on type of healthcare so what right. do these appointments really uh look like for both the patients and the providers well you know it's real interesting and it goes to the level of commitment and workflow i was just talking about with the vendors mm -hmm. like for example at its very simplest level well you have a video conference right you go in you have a hygienist a dentist somebody on the other end they uh, maybe use an intraoral camera, look in your mouth, and they go, oh, okay, and they make suggestions and, you know, that type of thing. The very, very, very simple workflow. Okay, that's the first step. However, it's much deeper than that. Uh, when you talk about an appointment, think about it. When you think about, you know, think about the idea of a virtual office instead of just this ethereal term, teledentistry. In a virtual office, you want to mimic some of the workflow. For example, before you get on a teledentistry visit, well, Maybe you can send forms online, fill out forms, medical histories and consent forms, COVID consent forms and, and medalists and things, right? And send those asynchronously through messaging through the practice, right? So the practice, before they even go on, they can have an idea of what your problems are, what you're thinking about, you know, they can have your forms. So that's adding to the workflow, right? So to answer your question very simply, and again, we can talk about this forever, is when you talk about a teledentistry visit, we're really trying to, number one, mimic workflows that are done in the office, and then to add to the workflow. Things you could do through teledentistry you might not be able to do on site. Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned the train has left the station. This uh, situation with practices basically shutting down for six to eight weeks and patients not being able to come in really sparked a need for consultations via remote systems. Teledentistry has come to the marketplace in a big way with, I don't know, I've lost count of the number of new teledentistry solutions that have uh, <laughs> announced yeah. themselves to the marketplace in the last few weeks. And I guess, where does a practice begin with making this a part of what they do? How do you get started? Yeah, so, so first of all, when you mentioned the maze of teledentistry, companies there kind of reminds me you know i've done a lot of work over the years on electronic health records right in the early days of electronic health records was kind of a gold rush when software vendors realized oh i better jump into this so everybody in the world had a quote ehr solution some were really ehr some were good some were terrible just trying to make money so so first of all recognize as you're going out in this world looking for teledentistry solutions there's teledentistry companies that are really trying to build teledentistry presence and there's companies that are trying to make a buck, the bottom line, right? right we're in a world where people try to make money. So, so, so number one, you'll see a lot out there. So try to, what I try to do with my clients is separate, you know, the real true companies from companies that are just out there bolting on video conferencing to make a buck and then maybe they'll be gone next year, right? Um, so to answer your question about what do you look for and what kinds of questions, okay? First of all, as you know, we've talked a lot and I've written tons of articles with you guys about getting dental software, right? The evaluation process. Being able to think about your needs, right? What do you need? Do you need the workflow? Do you need a complete workflow to tell dentistry? Do you want to get forms? Do you want to get you know, information up front? Or do you just want to do a simple video conference? Do you want to bring in collaborators? Do you want to have specialists join you in this case, right? So needs analysis, I keep harping on it. Looking at tell dentistry solutions is nothing different than when I have my clients doing needs analysis and requirements analysis with dental software, right? So first of all, recognize that it's going to be feature driven, but as a group practice or DSO, everybody's going to be a little different. 
So you need to think about the features. You need to understand the features. You need to be educated on features available from each vendor. And then you need to see kind of what, you don't want to put a, a square peg in a round hole, right? You want to see what fits into your practice or group. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you just mentioned practice or group. There's lots of different types of uh, teledentistry platforms that are now on the market. There are also lots of different types of practices. Are the needs of a group practice when it comes to a teledentistry platform going to be different than the needs of a single site practice? You know, no, that's a great question. And it's actually, you know, I'll use the analogy of dental software again. Okay, 80% of dental software, whether you're a group, a DSO, or a small practice, is going to be the same. You, you need um, appointments, right? You need clinical documentation. You need billing, right? You need all these different things. However, where DSOs and groups differ is now you kick it up a little bit because of multi-location. So you might need a call center, you know, module. You might need, you need billing for multiple groups. You need to refer back and forth to people within your group, right? So to answer your question, teledentistry is no different. 80% of it, the functionality of it will probably be similar. However, a good part of it will be catered towards a group. So for example, um, I just talked about referrals. So does the teledentistry platform allow you to, if there's no availability in one location, to automatically know if there's docs available in the other location? Or if there's specialists within your DSO, can you bring them on to manage the case, right? Um, do you have a central call center where teledentistry fits into that or the campaign? Some of these teledentistry groups actually can develop. I've seen some really interesting creative things about developing marketing campaigns after a teledentistry visit. Well, do you have, is that centralized, your campaigns and things like that? So really a big part of it will be similar, whether you're a practice, a group or DSO, but there's this multi-location concept that will be different than when you look at a teledentistry solution. And I'll tell you what, because it's so new, really, with a lot of vendors, um, if you're a group or practice, really drill down on that because you're not going to see a lot of offerings from many of those teledentistry vendors for a group or practice. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of, you know, the actual functionality of it, you just mentioned some of the you know, data and information that you might be documenting or moving around. Do uh, the teledentistry platforms that are out there right now allow you to integrate with your patient record? Can you take clinical notes while during these and have them go where they would normally go if you were seeing the patient in the office? And how close do these uh, software platforms come to recreating the workflow you would have with your software if you were seeing the patient face to face? Ah, good question. And what I'll say to that to start off is, you know, I re recently wrote an article for you folks, right? Uh, and tell dentistry called buyer beware. And this, this is applicable more than ever when you talk about interfacing. So as you know, I'm a geek. I'm a, I used to be a software development manager. I developed a lot of this type of software, right? Over many, many years. And the bottom line is that when you talk to tell dentistry vendors, it's really interesting because I ask about the integration because, you know, at the end of the day, a lot of people don't want to, they want to keep their practice management system and then have this teledentistry solution right along with it. But in order to interface, so let me, things like scheduling, right? Sending information schedules. So you schedule a teledentistry visit, it can port over to your practice management system. That kind of data is pretty basic, right? Um, mm -hmm. Some do it, some don't. It depends on how open the, your practice management vendor is to that relationship, right? Um, billing is another area, right? Sending codes, right? You can get reimbursed for some teledent types of teledentistry visits. That information, um, again, depending on the relationship between the teledentistry vendor and the practice management vendor, that's pretty basic information, billing insurance information. Where you really have to watch out is a real basic part that nobody talks about teledentistry. Remember, you can do a teledentistry visit, but how do you document it, right? <laughs> you have to have an EHR, you have to have clinical documentation. Well, when you talk to some of these teledentistry companies, they'll go, oh, no problem, you know, we can send it over to your practice management slash EHR system, buyer beware. Because now you're getting into medication lists and histories and procedures you work on, and that gets pretty complicated. And I have yet to see, and I might in the future, but I've yet to see with the teledentistry vendors I've talked to right now, an interface where that clinical information can be sent directly into the 
practice management documentation system. That's, that's a little more tricky and it really takes a practice management vendor to say, hey, we want to embrace. Now, I do know out there, there are pilots and there are, there, there's projects being going on where a practice management vendor has hooked up with a tele dentistry vendor. Okay, and in that case, you're gonna could get close innovation. You're gonna get cl close um, interfaces because you have a development group of the vendor of both vendors working closely with each other. That's what it takes to have a true integration. Otherwise, you'll get a simple integration or no in integration. Also, be very skeptical when a teledentistry company says, "Hey, no problem, <laughs> we interface." Right? Really question it and drill down. Mm -hmm. But is that where this eventually is going to head, that these types of remote appointments with patients are going to be tracked in your software just as a you know face-to-face -face appointment in your operatory? Well, um, from my experience in medicine, maybe mm -hmm. or maybe not. And I, I'll tell you why, because at the end of the day, okay, do you really want to have two pieces of software? I mean, right now, that's where we are, right? <laughs> you have tele dentistry yeah. vendors that are doing great work, and you have your prex management system. But... What I will tell you that we found in medicine that EHR again I, is a perfect example, right? There, there used to be EHR vendors and then the practice management vendors and they would interface with each other. What started happening then is the EHR vendors and medicine started over time building up very robust capability to do all kinds of practice management functions. And before you knew it, a lot of the groups, the practices, the MSOs in medicine like the SOs in dentistry, we're starting to say, hey, you know what? We don't want to have two pieces of software. Maybe this new EHR solution, boy, it has everything we need for practice management too, right? So I don't know what's going to happen in the short term, but there is a possibility. I mean, I, I've talked to vendors and I've seen teledentistry vendors that actually are developing very robust EHRs, right? And billing and people that have experience with software development, right? So I think what you're going to see as we grow this industry is you will see teledentistry platforms that do have the capability of a total practice management system, then the only question is, do I wanna keep the present practice management system and go to teledentistry? Or do I wanna to go to teledentistry vendors as a whole? Now on the flip side, right? Obviously the dental software vendors are saying, hey, <laughs> this is a great industry, right? So I'm sure you'll see software vendors, major software vendors come out with teledentistry solutions within their software, right? So, so I haven't seen a lot of that yet, but obviously we're still kind of at the infancy of this tremendous growth. So I think you're going to see it on both sides, both vendors developing solutions. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing that uh, we haven't touched on yet, but I know is a very important topic when it comes to uh, any communications uh, about patient care outside of the practice or communications with patients outside of the practice are the HIPAA regulations and patient privacy. How do those factor in with teledentistry and are the platforms that are out there now providing people with secure ways to communicate with their patients so that they are following the HIPAA guidelines? Right. So, so I'll say, first of all, um, to the, in this day and age, COVID is a game changer for everything. Everything's different yeah. now, right? So, so don't get a false sense of security about HIPAA because I'll tell you, right now, the HIPAA police <laughs> are knocking quite as many doors down because they're saying, hey, it's a crazy world. Yeah, people take Zoom and they hook it up with something else. And, you know, and a lot of these aren't necessarily secure platforms. But what you have to think about is the future, right? We have to think about where you're going. And so when we talk about compliant, HIPAA compliant systems, you really need to look at systems that have their own servers. Like, for example, um, if you get a message, right, in your email, instead of having all the information in your email, there'll be a link back to their server, you know. If somebody wants you to send them a picture an inch from an interall camera you purchased or whatever, right? Well, you can't attach that to an email. You have to somehow upload it to the server. So what's really important in terms of HIP and security is to find out from the vendor, number one, how they do security on their video conferencing on what's called asynchronous communication which is, you know, not direct real-time video conferencing, but sending messages back and forth with images and comments, right? It all has to be secure. But I've also written for you folks, right, at DPR, about security a lot. And it's really important because we're in the cloud, essentially, in tele-dentistry, right? Well, 
you have to find out if where they're hosting their servers, the data center that holds that information, are they HIPAA compliant? And there's a lot of rules and regulations around that. So there's a little bit of drilling you have to do, but I think everybody's getting this false sense of security and I can't talk about that enough that, hey, you know, right now the HIPAA rules are relaxed, but, but that's gonna change and you might find yourself, if you don't address security now in teledentistry in a few months, just out in the dark, <laughs> having to scramble. Mm -hmm. And it seems to me that, you know, right now, uh, everyone has started to pick up and use, you know, platforms like we're talking on right now, these video conferencing platforms. I'm sure that there are some dentists thinking, okay, I've got a teledentistry solution. It's FaceTime. It's on my phone right now. Right. So um, do people realize, you know, one, I guess that's not HIPAA compliant, I assume. So, you know, how do we get people to understand that you need to go beyond just this capability to talk to someone face-to-face -face remotely and actually have this robust back end that handles all of the more technical requirements for medical information? Yes, yeah, so, so thanks for bringing it up because, because realistically, um, putting HIPAA aside, okay, calling together solutions like a video conferencing app, a calendar app, I mean, it's very disjointed. Yes, you can talk to your patient, but where do you go after that? As I pointed out when we started talking, it, it's like a virtual office, right? You have to document the information. You have to send things back and forth, right? So you have to look at the workflows, okay, that are offered. You don't have a, a great workflow built in when you call together 10 different disparate applications, right, and trying to make it work for the patient. Um, I'll tell you a big thing. You know, when we talk about, you know, the power of teledentistry, to your point about collaboration, right? When have we been able to be, be able to have a video conference, bring on specialists that are working on the case, not only that, but share patient education videos while you're talking to these different people, have the specialists share imaging, right, all real time. And I've seen teledentistry solutions that take that to another level, not just real time, but a behind the scenes, conference. So for example, what's the term that's called asynchronous in teledentistry, which is messaging back and forth, you know, I'll send a picture, I'll look at it, I'll answer that. And all of a sudden you bring in the whole care team, right? To be able to behind the scenes, share information, comment, share records, share, share images, right? That's the power here. And so when you ask the question, you know, about putting together applications versus what's a true teledental app, that's a true teledental app, is to have the workflows built in. And you're seeing things, I mean, I go on and on, I've talked to vendors that are looking at AI, artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. believe it or not, where you use intraoral cameras they have, that take pictures of the mouth and they can call together a 3D image of it. And then their database looks in, in, at what's going on and makes a recommendation of what the problem is, right? Through AI, right? Yep. You're seeing that. So you're seeing a lot of creative. That, that's what really excites me. I mean, COVID's great because you can, you know, triage your emergencies and you can do pre-screening, right? That's cool, right? That helped. Yeah. But the stuff I'm talking about, that's really where teledentistry is going. It's going to be an important part in the future of a dental group practice or DSO. Mm -hmm. So you just hit on, you know, kind of, I guess, the reasoning why we've seen this explosion in the teledentistry arena in the last couple of months. And that's because Everyone is doing pre-screenings right now, especially when they were just seeing emergency patients, and this was the perfect way to connect with your patient, talk to them before they come into your practice. How do we keep the momentum going in the dental industry? How do we make teledentistry not just something for this moment as we're going through a crisis, but something that becomes part of just the everyday operations of dental practices? Right, right. No, good question. And I think it's what we're doing right now, right? It's education, right? I, th I think, I bet you took a, a survey, 80, 90% of dentists think, oh, teledentistry has helped me through COVID, right? And then everything's cool. Then I'll go back to my life, right? But I think the education of how teledentistry, like I said, the trains left the station. And I talked about some cool features and workflows and collaboration you couldn't do before, right? So I think the education, number one, coming from people like us in the industry, about how teledentistry can be used as part of your go forward strategy, but also coming from the vendors themselves. What I found, you know, I've been, you know, I've been in dental, dental and medical software for years and years and years, and I work with a lot of vendors and I've done software myself, right? The one thing I've learned from a lot of years in software is baby steps, right? So I think this COVID crisis going on will help groups, practices, and DSOs get in 
the seeds of teledentistry, through the very basics so it can get them through what's going on. But it's up to us and the vendors, you know, the vendor is responsible and to say, hey, you know what? We've had 30 functions here on our teledentistry, but you know what? You're just using one for COVID. We're getting towards the end of COVID. Let's talk about how you can make your patient care better or your practice more efficiently, right? By using these other three features. And by the way, have you ever thought of bringing on a collaboration feature where now you can get better patient care by bringing in the whole team, right? So it's really education. That's what I found with EHR, right? <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, you know, people in the beginning of the EHR revolution knew nothing about it. And it just took a lot of people out there talking, talking about features. So, so it will happen. But people have to have an open mind. And it has to come from a lot of education from both the vendors and from people like you and I in the industry. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing we haven't really touched on is the finances behind this. Can dental practices bill for teledentistry appointments? Can they, you know, use this as a way to do more than just triage patients, but actually take appointments that generate revenue? Yes, absolutely. You know, it's funny you mention that because I remember the early days of uh, when we had patient portals like in medicine and dentistry, and, you'd, and, you'd, and a patient could uh, go on the portal and ask questions to their doc, right? And the docs are like, well, that's great, but I'm working 30 hours a day. I'm not getting paid for these online things, right? But it has changed. <laughs> so right now, the ADA does have a few codes. I think those will be by talking to the vendors tell, that know about this stuff and talk to the ADA all the time, right? I think those will be expanded. So just as I mentioned, teledentistry will be an important part of a practice group or DSO moving forward. I think we'll get associated codes that will get more granular. Right now, they're general. There's a few of them. But I think we'll get very granular as we go along. Mm -hmm. In terms of, you know, the ways that this can work, one thing you've talked about uh, is the consultations with specialists, the ability to bring them in in a true, you know, multi-party consultation with the patient, the clinician, primary clinician, the specialist. Do you see that specialists might be uh, drivers of the adoption of this technology? Is that something that by asking doctors to work with them in that way, we could see? a continued push of teledentistry? Well, I think they should be. And, you know, I've written some articles for you, all right, on yep. electronic referrals. I've been pushing electronic referrals in dentistry for years, right? And now you're finally being able to see it. Because realistically, I think that from a business standpoint, I think people would love general dentists, specialists would love to do business with each other electronically instead of faxing back and forth, waiting a day, taking a phone call, right? So now through teledentistry, we're able to do the collaboration. So number one, I mean, it, it, it checks off all the boxes, right? It's from a patient care standpoint. Now you have your care team real time sharing information with each other and trying to figure out solutions, right? But at the end of the day, everybody wants to make money from a financial standpoint. Yes, a specialist. I mean, I work with a lot of specialty groups. I help them get software and I'm real familiar with to make their money, right? And obviously that referral relationship that everybody wants gets a lot closer when you can do it online electronically. So uh, so yeah, to answer your question, I, I would love the specialist to push from their end, um, but the general dentist as well, because it's just it's just a match made in heaven now with the technology we have. Mm -hmm. Now, um, in our upcoming June issue of Dental Products Report, this is the subject of your column. You wanna kind of give us a little preview of uh, what you shared with our audience for our June issue? Yes, um, the one thing we, so as you know, what I'm all about is I'm, being a, a software guy and being what I do in the industry, my goal is to kind of help practices groups and DSOs figure this stuff out, right? Go through, go through this maze of craziness and vendors and everything. So basically the gist of the article, we call it buyer beware, right? Mm -hmm. Is to number one, talk about teledentistry, just kind of 10,000 foot view, but mostly start talking about the features and functionality. As we talked about, I'm kind of a features functionality guy, right? That's how I help my, clients get software, right? And so in the article, we didn't have enough space. We'd have to have a whole, I'd have to take up the whole journal, right? <laughs> to write about all the features and articles. But I start talking about some of the major features and functionality that really when you're vetting these vendors, you should be thinking about, because uh, because that's really important. Um, also real quick, I point out in the article, as I do all the time, <laughs> that at the end of the day, your contracts are really important too, right? Because you can have the best software in the world, 
but if you don't get a really good negotiated contract. So I don't want people to lose track of that. It's not just about just the software, but as you know, I've written tons of articles about <laughs> negotiating contracts. And, and, and so I talk a little bit about the importance of that, but, but it's really to help people start on this journey and really understand what they should be looking for and the types of vendors they should be looking for. Mm -hmm. Are there other online resources that you think uh, you know, dentists should check out right now as they are beginning this uh, path towards teledentistry? Well, uh, you know, really the resources are just starting to come, okay? So, you know, I mean, everybody Googles teledentistry, right? There's, there's different search words you can use, but there's no, there's no particular resource, which is actually why. <laughs> it's funny, I'm glad you brought that up, but, I, you know, as I started this journey, looking along, you know, when teledentistry started getting popular, obviously I was looking for resources too and didn't really find any definitive resources. So actually, <laughs> I'm coming out fairly soon with an ebook, um, The Teledentistry Survival Guide, and it's really kind of a continuation of what I started in the article, which is really talking about features, functionality, you know, how to look at vendors, how to negotiate contracts. So, um, so yeah, so I actually have that coming out on a, teledentistrysurvivalguide.com that should be coming out fairly soon. And uh, then on my own asset, right, uh, dentalsoftwarevisor.com, I'm just gonna continue to uh, do podcasts. One of my goals is to really get closer and closer to these uh, teledentistry companies, understand more about them, their plans, how they do things. As you know, as a techie, I kind of look at things through that lens. Mm -hmm. So um, on dentalsoftwarevisor.com, I'm gonna try to continue to educate. So, um, but I think you're just going to see more and more, right? Yes, mm -hmm. that's out there and more research. Wonderful. So we really appreciate you uh, joining us today and sharing some of your expertise. If anyone in the audience is looking to uh, kind of pick your brain for some more specific information, how can they get a hold of you? Well, just uh, the easiest way is uh, Mike U at uh, dentalsoftwareadvisor.com. And, uh, and then uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions. You know, it's technology is my passion, right? So whether you're a client or want to hire me for anything, it's like, I love talking about this stuff, right? <laughs> just, and, and the teledentistry is just so exciting. It's just really, it charged me up like when EHRs first come on the scene. I just want to want to soak it all in and, and learn as much about it as I can and share that with folks. So, Well, we really appreciate uh, all your partnership with us here at Dental Products Report. And thanks very much for joining us today on this broadcast. Thanks again, Noah.